there's a lot of weird things in this equation. Uh, for instance, 6.2.1, we have one mark being awarded and 6.2.2, that is still the case. But 6.3.3 is out of eight marks. It doesn't make any sense. Let me show you why I'm saying that. Uh, so 6.1, we are asked to state Lichardi's principles. So what it essentially says is that if an equilibrium is uh, disturbed, then the system will favor the reaction that opposes that disturbance, right? In attempt to reinstate a new equilibrium, right? So that is 6.1. Let's go ahead and do 6.2 and 6.2.1 so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So if we go through our equation statement again here, you're gonna see that uh, it says that one mole of pure hydrogen iodine gas is sold in a one decimeter cube uh, container at 721 kelvins. Equilibrium is arranged according to the following balance equation. So let's just copy down that balance equation real quick. So we have 2 Hi and then we have H2 and I2. Right, so if we set up our table to calculate our Kc, we're gonna have something like the following. So let me just do that real quick. So here we're gonna have the initial uh, number of moles, right, on the first column. And then here we're gonna have the change. And then here we're gonna have the number of moles in equilibrium. And the last one, we're gonna have the concentration. So what we're given here is the initial number of moles of hydrogen iodine, right? It is said to be one mole. And then from there, we're given the number of moles at equilibrium of I2. So the number of moles at equilibrium of I2, uh, we have 0 0.11. Initially, we didn't have any H2 or I2, right? So we had 0 and 0 here. So it means that the change of I2 is plus 0 0.1, right? Uh, not 0 0.1, but 0 0.11. Yeah, so we have 0 0.11 here. And then that is the change in the number of moles of I2. But then the change in the number of moles of I2 is the same as the change in the number of moles of H2, right? So we can put uh, 0 0.11 here. We're saying that they're the same because we have the same balancing coefficient. But then when we come here, because uh, now we have two, we're gonna have two multiplied by 0 0.11, right? Uh, which is 0 0.11. 2, 2. So we have 0 0.22 uh, right there. So with that 0 0.22, we can then uh, find uh, the number of moles of Hi at equilibrium, right? So it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.22. That's how you do it. And then in the product size, you just uh, add. So 1 minus 0 0.22. Uh, I'm getting 0 0.78, so we have 0 0.78, here we have 0 0.11. So 6.2.1, we're looking for the number of moles of H2 at equilibrium. We're looking for the number of moles of H2 at equilibrium. So here they are 0 0.11, so we have 0 0.11 uh, moles. And then the number of moles of Hi at equilibrium, here they are, we have them now, right? We have uh, 0 0.78 moles, right? And all this work just for one mark. That's what I was talking about when I say, yeah, I don't really understand um, the mark allocation in this question. Maybe there's a quick way of finding those number of moles at equilibrium. Uh, you can say that uh, for H2, right but then for hi you really need to you know uh take it a, a step further to find those number of moles at equilibrium but anyway stories let's move to the second uh question to the third question by the way 6.3 6.3.1 uh the equilibrium um constant kc at 721 kelvins is 0 0.02 and then the temperature of the container is now increased to 850 K. The equilibrium constant Kc 
is now 0 0.09 so it has increased with an increase in temperature what does that mean let's go ahead so the first question is the forward reaction exothermic or endothermic it is endothermic it is endothermic and why am i saying that 6.3.2 we need to fully explain that so what we know right just from the basics is that an increase in temperature let's not forget let me just write this first kc is equal to the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of uh, the reactants right so if kc increase it means that now we have more products now we have more products the forward reaction was fever so the question is saying is the forward reaction exothermic or is endothermic the forward reaction is endothermic uh, that is because when the temperature was increased we had more products right so it only makes sense that the forward reaction is endothermic because if you increase temperature endothermic is we want and as we can see that our kc value has went up we we can clearly see that the forward reaction was indeed fever right and then uh 6.3.38 marks right let's conclude the mass of hi present at the new equilibrium at 850k right so let's start with the initial number of moles so the initial number of moles we have one right as we've already talked about and then for h2 we have zero for i2 we have zero right so we have that there but then now we don't know the change anymore because that change we had was for uh 721 kelvins now we're at 850 we don't know the change anymore so we can put a variable in place of the change right we know that for the reactions you have to subtract so let's say minus um minus 2x right and then if this is minus 2x and we have a balancing coefficient of 2 then for h2 it should be plus x because the balancing coefficient there is one and then plus x again right and then for hi at equilibrium we're gonna have one minus two x and then for h2 we're gonna have zero plus x then zero plus x and now we move to the concentration uh, so the concentration the volume is one right and we know that concentration is equal to number of moles divided by volume so the concentration will just be one minus two x uh x x again and then now we have our concentration at equilibrium in terms of x yeah we can go ahead and set up our uh, equation our expression for kc it will be the concentration of h2 multiplied by the concentration of i2 divided by the concentration of hi squared we're squaring that because our coefficient here is two right so let's go ahead and substitute uh, in place of kc we're gonna have 0 0.09 being equal to the concentration of h2 that is x concentration of um i2 that is x again and then everything divided by one minus two x to the power two right so we're gonna have 0 0.09 being equals to x squared divided by one minus two x um two x squared so what you can do here <coughs> you can cross multiply and complicate your life or you can take square root on both sides let's take square root on both that so that i can show you what i'm talking about so we can take the square root of uh 0 0.09 and then on the right hand side we can take the square root of this entire thing so what is the square root of 0 0.09 uh, that is 0 0.3 so we have 0 0.3 being equal to uh, square root of x squared that is x and then in the denominator we're just gonna have 1 minus 2x and just like that we don't have a square anymore because if we kept the square there we would have to solve a quadratic equation which is something i'm not really looking forward to so if we cross multiply here we're gonna get uh x being equals to 0 
and then what is 0 0.3 multiplied by minus 2x that is minus 0 0.6x right so you can see that we can take this term to the left hand side if we do that we're gonna get uh, 1.6x being equals to 0 0.3 so x is equals to 0 0.3 divided by 1.6 so what is 0 0.3 divided by 1.6 i'm getting 0 0.1875 moles so the value of x is 0 0.1875 moles but we're not looking for x we're looking for the mass of hi present at new equilibrium the mass of hi present at new equilibrium so let's go ahead and find the number of moles of hi at equilibrium is one minus two x so we can say that the number of moles uh, will be equals to one minus two x but we now know what x is it is 0 0.1875 so what is uh, the number of moles uh, I'm getting 0 0.625, right? So we have 0 0.625. So we have the number of moles of HI at equilibrium. Uh, lastly, the mass will be equal to the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. The number of moles is 0 0.625. Uh, I know that uh, the molar mass of uh, hydrogen is, is what? What's the molar mass of hydrogen again? I know that it is one, right? How can we forget that? Now we just need the molar mass of I. That is 127, right? And then if I multiply those two, I'm getting 80 grams.